start a series of something that I, it, I believe it, it will really like coincide with what we've been already teaching concerning the grace of God. But I believe this is an element of what God would have us to receive at this particular time um, based on what we've been teaching. And uh, I've been thinking about it for quite some time. And I don't know how long ago it was that I had this dream and I dream a lot. And sometimes when I'm dreaming, I'm preaching <laughs> in the dream. And in the dream when I'm preaching, you know, uh, the word of the Lord that comes to me, I wake up sometime and I write it down. And so that's, and I carry the message that the Lord had given me in this particular dream. But in this particular dream, I saw a book. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> I saw a book and the book was entitled, The Power of Decision, Your Key to Manifestation. Uh, and so I began to think about it and meditate on it. And uh, this was um, when I, ju I just saw the cover of the book, actually. And then the Lord began to deal with me on the subject, and I began to study a little bit. And then I had another dream about me actually preaching the message. And so you're going to get in on some of this tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so I believe it's such a powerful tool that we have. And I pray that the Lord, I ask the Lord to preach through me, to articulate to you the power that lies in just making a decision. Amen. You know what, what power is in a negative light is released when you don't make one. Right. Hallelujah. You get upset, you get frustrated, as Pastor Tony said, you get offended when someone needs to make a decision and doesn't do it. But when you, when you make a decision, there's such a power that is released that will cause what you decide to come to pass. Decision is the act of or process of deciding. It means the act or the need for making up one's mind. It's a judgment. You are one decision away from your victory. Listen, God created you to, for victory. And you have to decide, make a judgment, process it, and declare that I'm going to walk in victory. Somebody said, I am going to walk in victory in every area of my life. Glory to God. It's just a decision that you make, and you determine where the outcome will be in your life based on the decisions that you make. To decide means to solve or conclude a question, a controversy, or a struggle by giving victory to one side. Now, you may have two choices or two things before you, but you can conclude the matter or decide to give the victory to wherever you decide to have it. And so you will solve or conclude a question, a controversy, or a struggle by giving victory to one side. That means that in this position that you and I are in, you can't be double-minded in your decisions. If this is the right way you're going to go, then that's the way you go. And you will always come out on victory on the way you've made the decision. It also means to determine or settle something in dispute or doubt. Now, when you're having doubt about something, when you make a decision and you stick with the decision, you will get rid of all doubt. It was to settle the dispute that you would have. It also means to bring a person to a decision or to persuade or convince. It, bring, it means to bring you to a place of decision to persuade or be convinced. When you decide on something, you have to be convinced of your decision. You have to be persuaded that this is a decision. And when you are, you will experience, I'm telling you, victory in that area of your life. That's how powerful the tool of decision is to you and I. That's how powerful God has made it. If you just decide, God will see to it that that decision that you've made will bring you to a place of victory. It mean, listen, it means to be persuaded. It means to be convinced so that when I make a decision, I'm not thinking, did I, you know, is, no, I'm going to do it this way. If that don't work, no, I'm convinced. And when you are convinced, you're going to see victory in that area of your life. Look at Job chapter 22. Job 22. Now understand, you've got to be a person that makes decisions. 
and learn how to make the proper and the right decisions. Not making decisions, you make a decision for failure. When you don't make a decision to succeed and have victory in your life, you've already made a decision for failure. You can never be at a place where you're just stagnant and say, well, I can't decide. I don't know what to do. How many know when you don't decide to do something, you have made a decision for failure? You have allowed yourself to be stagnant and to stay in that position. And so you and I, when you make a decision, you are one step away from victory. Glory to God. And to see the victory that God is mani- wants to manifest in your life. So never, listen, don't ever underestimate yourself. Sometimes we make decisions based on our ability or what we can see in the natural or our human ability, and we tend to make decisions based on that. But you're more powerful than that. Don't underestimate yourself. There are no limitations that God has placed on your life. Remember, we're created in the image and the likeness of God. You're created in the image and the likeness of God. God, the creator of the universe, we are made in his image and his likeness. We've already discovered that he has made the deposit on the inside of us everything that we would need to be successful in life. He's already put the download on the inside of you. He's given you the intelligence. He's given you the blessing. He's given you the wisdom. He's given you the know-how. He's not put any limitations on your life whatsoever. He's put everything in you that you would need to be successful And so I have it, so don't ever underestimate yourself. You are blessed of God. Hallelujah. Glory to He has empowered you to prosper. Somebody said, I have been empowered by God to prosper. God has made every single one of us, given you the intelligence to be successful. He's given you the wisdom so that you and I could be successful in everything that he has called you to do. He's put in this atmosphere of his creation everything that will line up in life's journey for your life, for you and I to walk in this place of victory everywhere that you go. That's why he told uh, Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, tell him if they touch it, it'll be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in. You'll be blessed when you go out. Everything about you is empowered to prosper. And I've set you in an atmosphere where you will prosper by the decisions that you've made. And I've already put them on the inside of you so you cannot fail. You will only fail if you don't decide to do. Glory to God. But if you decide to do, there are some things that are so normal for the believer normal for you and i there are things that are abnormal that we experience the normal things is that you and i will walk in the love of god you walk in peace you walk in prosperity it's normal for a believer to be healthy how many know god created you to be wealthy to have all your needs met that you will be successful that your marriage will flow in the will of god for your life these are all the things that is on the inside of you that you want to see happen in your life. Amen? Amen. How many want to walk in the love of God? How many want to experience love in your marriage, in your home? How many want to be wealthy? How many want to be healthy? That's inside of us. We want to achieve those things and walk in those areas of our lives, walking in this divine health, walking in divine prosperity, walking in the peace of God. We want these things in our life, and it's normal for us. Now, it will be abnormal to be sick and diseased and walk in poverty. That's abnormal. We don't look at that as something normal. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many people that are in the world that are sick, and there are a lot of sick people in the world, it doesn't matter how many people that are in the world that are poor, and there are a lot of poor people, we, it doesn't matter how the majority is, we will never deem that as normal. We will never say that that's the way it's supposed to be. Because on the inside of you, created in the image, in the likeness of God, is a place that you know is normal, that you desire to be at, and God said, it's just a decision away. Oh, glory to God. 
for you to walk in that area of your life which for you would be normal. It's abnormal for you to be sick. For you to be sick, that's not who you are. That's abnormal. Amen. To be poor is abnormal. But, it, it, you know, the world, you know, they, the majority, you know, they, sometimes they allow you to think like the world thinks and everybody's doing it so that's okay or that's the way it's supposed to be. But for a believer on the inside of you, it doesn't matter how many people are doing that, you know that ain't what it's supposed to be. There's somebody that had at once upon a time trying to, to preach to the church that you're supposed to be poor, not supposed to have anything, but there were a few folks in there that got a hold of the word of God and said, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not what God has for us. And they decided through the word of God to make a difference and change. And as a result of that, there are more people that are prospering in the things of God because that's the normal Christian life for us. Hallelujah. And you and I will experience these things by realizing that God has placed it on the inside of us. The things that God has placed on the inside of you that you, it just sometimes it looks like, is it going to happen? Is it going to work for me? Because we don't see it happening. But if you just decide, I am not going to be sick. I am, listen, I'm telling you, if you just decide, I don't care if my grandmama died of it, but I refuse. I am not going to die of cancer. I refuse. I will not die. I know my mama didn't have enough. They lived in welfare. I decided I am not going to live in welfare. I am not going to live like that. I am not going to live poor. That's not how God created me. To live. I am not, that's not the will of God for my life. Everybody in the family is getting a divorce. I have decided when I get married, there will be no divorce. This will be forever. I am, this is the will of God for my life. I have decided. Glory to God. The, and I empower myself to receive what God has already put on the inside of me just by making the right decisions. And you have got to decide this is how it's going to be. We will not die of cancer. We shall live and declare the wonderful works of God. My children will not serve the devil. I, I did not have kids to give them to the devil. You, are you hearing me? I did not have children to give them to the devil. As for me and my house, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to make a decision. And God, by his spirit, will empower you. We're going to see that. He will empower that decision to become a reality in your life. You just have to have a made-up mind. Making, having a decision is meaning to have a made-up mind. And so God, we, he's created us this that way. He, there's some things that are normal for you. That's the way you feel about some certain things because that's in the heart of God that he's placed on the inside of you. He wants you to feel that way. He wants you to be that way. Job 22, are you there? The Amplified Bible says, verse 28, you shall also decree it. You shall also decide and decree a thing and it shall be established for you and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. You shall also decide and decree a thing. Somebody say, I shall decide and decree a thing. And it shall be established. Now, I didn't write that. The word, you, we just read that together. That's the word of God. You shall decide a thing and it shall be established. You can't let anybody talk you into failure. You, people that tell you all the time, that's not going to work for you. It's never going to happen for you. You can't have that. Nobody's going to recover of that. Everybody died of that. You know, they don't decide for you. You shall decide a thing. And it shall be established unto you. The message Bible says you'll decide what you want and it will happen. Glory to God. You decide what you want and it will happen. Your life will be bathed in light. Listen, you decide. You've got to bring, Pastor Tony's talking about imparting into the next, next generation. You've got to teach your children how to make a quality decision for their lives. 
Stop making all the decisions for them. May help them make a quality decision by hearing the voice of God, by getting hold of the word of God so that God can release his plan and purpose for their lives. And he said, and you'll decide a thing. And God said, it will happen for you. What you decide, it will happen. Somebody say, what I decide will happen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not what somebody else decided for you. Not what somebody has spoken over your life. It's what you decide. He said, you'll decide what you want, and it will happen. Look at James chapter 1. And so again, it's making a decision, being decisive about what it is that you desire and what you believe is the will of God. It's amazing how many people want something and say it's the will of God because they want it. And when it doesn't turn out the way they want it, that wasn't the will of God. Now understand, these decisions are based on the will of God, the word of God that he will give to you. You've got to be able to make a decision and stick with it. Don't be, you know, make a decision one way and then, then, then change your mind the next day. Just stick with it. God, well, you'll see it come to pass. God, he's not fickle in his thinking, and he didn't make you that way. You have what it takes to be successful. Again, don't underestimate yourself. James chapter 1, you're very familiar with it. You know, the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He said, don't let that, but when a man, he, he needs to ask in faith, nothing wavering. Let me read it to you in the message Bible. It says, for if you, James chapter 1, verse Five, if you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be it won't be condescending to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers, worry their prayers. Are you hearing me? People who worry their prayers are like wind, whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. Amplified Bible says, verse 5, it says, if you, any of you are, any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of giving God who gives to everyone liberally and grudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to him. And God is, he's okay with you asking for help when you don't know something. He's not going to say, why you don't know? Like you do your kids. Why are you asking me? Why you don't know what you want to do? You need to make up your mind. No, if you need help, God will help you. Amen. Glory to God. He said, only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wa wavers, hesitates, or doubt is like the bellowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let su not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolent, he is unstable and in unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. This man who is double-minded, he is unstable in everything, how he thinks, he's unstable in how he feels, and he's unstable in the decision that he makes. God is not asking you to be, un he doesn't want you to be double-minded, and when it comes to asking God, and when you hear from God, make a decision, that I'm going to stick with what God has said, and then you will be empowered to prosper, and you will see what God has spoken to you come to pass in your life. And so God doesn't want you and I to be double-minded. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God created me to win. And I am determined to be a winner. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I say, I decide tonight I will win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, 
to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Look at the Amplified. The Bible says, and let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind. Settle in your heart, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind in that peaceful state in which, as members of Christ, one body, you are also called to live. And be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Message Bible said, let the peace of God or Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thanksgiving, thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. And so he's telling you and I that let you, when you make a decision, be settled in your heart be, let that be the final decision. When you make a decision, let that be your final decision. In other words, don't waver back and forth with your decision. If you decide to do something based on what God has spoken to you, now let the peace of God rule in your heart. Another, another translation said, let it be the umpire. Let it be the one that allows you to see that the decision that you've made is God and then stick with it. Let it be the finality of all questions that arise in your mind. When question rises in your mind that is contrary to, the, to what God has said to you, then what God has said to you, let that anchor your soul. Let that be the thing that keep you. If God said it, then that's final authority. And I've decided to go with the word of God, so go with what God has said. And that is a release of your faith in action on your part. Believing the word of God, believing what God is saying, and sticking with it. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, I believe the King James Version says, take no thought for your life. Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink, neither yet for your body what you shall put on. It says, Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? The Message Bible said, If you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes. And if you make a decision that God supplies your need, then why are you worried about how to get your needs met? See, when you make certain decisions about certain things that God has promised you and has placed on the inside of you, it will get rid of all doubt. It will get rid of worry. If God said it, it belongs to you. If God said it, it's yours. If this is the will of God and you know it's the will of God, if you decide this is how I'm going to live, I'm going to live a godly life, then I'm no longer worried about anything else. It'll get rid of all doubt. Remember, the double-minded man is not going to receive anything. And how many want to receive the normal Christian life? We want to receive what God says belongs to us. Now, if I decide for God, living a life of God worship, my life is toward God, it will follow that, though, that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtime or where the clothes are in your closet are in fashion, there is far more to life than your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to the outer appearance that you clothes that hang on your body. He said, your life is much more than that. Like, he says, look at the birds, free and unfuttered, not tied down to a job description. Hallelujah. Careless in the care of God, and you count far more to him than birds and it all started with a decision to live a life like God and if I'm gonna live a life like God I'm not gonna worry about how to take care of myself 
I'm not going to worry about how things are going to, I get rid of, it dispels all doubt when I decide. When he said, don't take no thought for your life, I've already decided to live a life like God. God takes care of me. God is my provider. I will never worry another day about how I provide for myself. Glory to God. He alone is God. My position is to do the will of God. And when I do the will of God, God has already provided everything that I would need while I'm walking out the will of God for my life. So I'm not going to worry about how I'm going to get it, where it's going to come from, how much it's going to cost, and how we're going to do it. I'm walking out the will of God. I've already decided. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk out the plan and the purposes of God for my life. And as a result of that, I'm going to live my life pleasing to God, but I'm going to live my life based on the decisions that I know that God is my provider. God will do exactly what he said. Isn't that what happened with Abraham? Look at Romans chapter 4 again. We're going to read it in another translation. Romans chapter 4. Hallelujah. Romans 4, verse 17, and I'm reading out the, the, Amplif the Message Bible first. It says, we call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made, him some made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't it that we we've always read in the scripture, God saying to Abraham, <clears throat> I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word making something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Now listen to this. Now, when everything looked hopeless, remember the, the King James verse said, Abraham hoped against hope. Message Bible said, when Abraham believed anyway, when everything looked hopeless, he believed deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. He decided, I'm going to live not on the basis of what I couldn't do, but I'm going to live on the basis of what he could do. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to, I am going to live not on the basis of my human nature or my limitations of what it looks like I can and cannot do. I'm going to live on the basis of what he can do. Abraham decided that. You have to decide that. When everything looks hopeless, when everything looks like it's, it's abnormal, and that abnormality is the majority. Even in the midst of everything looking abnormal, I choose to live the normal Christian life. And I choose to live my life based on what he can do and not what I can do. And that, that's what Abraham did. He decided to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of people. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. And so Abraham had a promise from God, I'm going to have a big family. So he decided, I decided I'm going to live my life based on what God said and not what my body says, not what anybody else says. I am Abraham, the father of many nations. I've got a big family. I've decided I'm going to live my life like this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's what you and I've got to do. We've got to decide to live this kind of life, not based on what you see, but based on what he said. When you make a decision, sometimes we have a tendency to make a decision based on the circumstances or based on things that we see naturally. But your decision is not based on what you see, it's what he said. Hallelujah. God said that belongs to me. God said I can do that. God says the grace is on my life for that. You may not think so, but God said it. That's what I decided to do. I'm going to go with God and live my life like God desires me to live, not based on what I see. There are certain things that you have to settle in your life as a believer that you will not move away from those things because of the decision that you've made. 
You've got to, how many know that you will have to decide to be a tither or you will always be tempted to keep the tithe? You have to make a decision. It doesn't matter if I get put out in the street. I will never rob God of what belongs to him. And because I've made that decision, I'll never be put out on the street. But some of you struggle in areas of your life because you never made the decision. I made a decision when I got married. It was for life. I'm not looking at nobody else. I'm not looking for nobody else. I made a decision. And as a result, I'm experiencing victory. You need to make some decisions about your life. You need to make some decisions so that you can experience the victory that God says belong to you in this victory. And the decision that you make is not based on what you see. It's based on what he said. Because if you see it, oh, I don't make enough money to tithe. How am I tithe and pay my rent too? If I pay my tithes, I won't be having enough money for my rent. So I don't know if I can do the tithe thing. And so now you're making a decision based on what you see and not what he said. And when you make a decision based on what he said, you will always come to a place of victory. Remember, this decision to be able to decide is being in a place where you are persuaded and you are convinced. Abraham was fully persuaded that God that made the promise, he was able also to perform it. He was convinced that God, even though his body was old, a hundred years old, nothing was working. His wife was barren. He was convinced that God had the ability to give him whatever it needed to make him a father of many nations. He was convinced. I know it don't look like I have enough money to be in that house, but I am convinced that God has for me what he says belong to me, and I am going to live the normal life that God has for me as a believer. Glory to God. That not know what's happening in the world or what's happening to the people that are in the world. I made the decision. And my decision is the open door to reality in my life. And it calls what God has said to come to pass in my life. Come on, stand to your feet. Glory to God. Somebody said, I have decided I am going to live a normal Christian life and that is a life of peace prosperity health healing love and everything that God has already deemed belong to me that's my decision I walk in it I experience and will have victory God made me to win glory to god hallelujah glory praise you jesus hallelujah glory to god it is such a powerful tool that god's placed on the inside of you you know the enemy is in the small scale i realize on a very small scale that the enemy is trying to rob of, of that of of us of that power to make a decision even on a small scale because he realized that if you can make a decision on a small scale and continue to climb the ladder that there are some big decisions that you need to make that when you make them there is a release of God's power to see to it that it come to pass but he will keep you down here on this low level where you can't even decide where to go eat and as a result of that you don't eat nowhere and as a result, you're hungry. You're without because you can't decide where to eat. Are you hearing me? But if he can keep you right there, fussing, doubt, worry, frustrated, when God said, don't take no thought for your life, just decide. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God takes care of me, and I'm going to allow him to take care of me. And I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. Glory to God. And so there are other areas in your life that you have not made a decision. And the enemy is keeping you right there because he doesn't want these big things to happen in your life. And he knows if you just decide, your business will succeed. Oh, glory to God. Holly. If you decide to start a business... It, it'll prosper just because you started it. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. It cannot fail. You weren't created to fail. You can't, listen to me, you are created to win. Don't you underestimate the power of God that's on the inside of you. Well, you, know, it's the, you know, the enemy will allow you to think that too. Everybody who's successful is because they're so special and they got these special people that God has made them successful and that's just not me. I wasn't created to be successful. The devil is a liar. You know why they're successful? They decided. The reason why you're not is because you can't make a decision. But if you will make a decision, I will be successful. Glory to God. Everything my hands touch, it will prosper. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've been wanting to start that business for years. You have not done it yet because you just haven't decided. And when somebody asks you, when are you going to do it? I haven't decided yet. Wow, that's the only thing that's stopping it is a decision. When are you going to do that? I don't know. I ain't decided yet. Why? Because the moment you decide, it's done. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The moment. Somebody said, I've got the victory. I, the victory. I, was, created to win. I was created to win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 